Welcome to the Bill and Angie Whitman Tropical Fruit Pavilion here at Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden. This is a place to celebrate the legacy of Bill Whitman, who was one of our great pioneers of tropical fruits in South Florida. And uh, he, he sponsored this wonderful facility to grow some of the world's rarest and most special tropical fruits. Some of those that were really important historically include the breadfruit, which was actually what got him started in his passion for tropical fruit, because he spent time in the South Pacific after World War II and sampled some of the wonderful varieties of breadfruit across the island. So we planted one here last year in honor of that part of his legacy. And before that, he had gotten inspired dreaming of the tropics when he was uh, actually during the time of World War II when he was in the frozen north and reading David Fairchild's The World Grows Round My Door. And David Fairchild was also talking about all the wonderful fruits that were being introduced and tried in, in South Florida. And to celebrate that legacy, we have one of David Fairchild's um, most coveted fruit introductions the, of tropical fig, Ficus auriculata. David Fairchild hoped so much that that could be introduced into South Florida successfully with a self-fruiting variety. He didn't have that during his lifetime, but we found one later. And now it's growing here and uh, will soon be producing fruits. And they're both in the same family, so it's kind of a nice uh, encapsulation of the whole legacy of tropical fruits introduction here in South Florida that we're carrying on here at Fairchild. Inside here, uh, the goal of this facility, which opened in 2003, is to have a place where fruits that need even warmer conditions than our normal uh, South Florida temperatures will have a place where they can be protected from the cold and where they can also have better water quality. This is watered with what's called reverse osmosis water, which is like rainwater all year. So one of the things that limits some fruits in South Florida is that our soils are very high in calcium carbonate, limestone uh, high in pH, so that some tropical fruits don't like that as much. And so we can really pamper them. We can make this just like a rainforest. And we've also very recently installed a fog system that actually gives it more of a cloud forest feel so we can make it an even more humid and tropical setting that a lot of these fruits uh, thrive in. To start off, we have a beautiful specimen of one of uh, Bill Whitman's favorite fruits, which is the mangosteen. David Fairchild loved it too. It's often called the queen of, queen of tropical fruit, and everyone who's tried a mangosteen loves it. I've never heard contrary, but it tends to be kind of delicate for South Florida. We get a little too cold in the winter. Um, it sometimes doesn't like our soils as much, but Bill Whitman, who never gave up on a, on a challenge for tropical fruit, at his home in Ball Harbor on Miami Beach, he was able to actually fruit this for the first time in South Florida in a, in a very protected setting he was able to create. We've also fruited this tree a couple times in here, but it's still challenged because it has to be stressed and droughted to fruit. So now that our conditions are so luxuriant, it's harder to get it to fruit, but we at least have a beautiful uh, specimen of that tree so people can, can see it and see what a healthy mangosteen looks like. To tie in with that a little bit, we have one of David Fairchild's favorite food plants. This is the pandan, this green plant here. They use the leaves for actually flavoring rice, and David Fairchild uh, loved rice flavored with this. And he tried to introduce this during his, uh, his Cheng Ho expedition to Indonesia back in 1939-1940. And um, unfortunately, it didn't survive coming back, and he was very disappointed. But since then, we've uh, been growing it here in the United States. And so that once again shows the shared legacy of these uh, great tropical food plants here in South Florida. And another wonderful food plant here, a fruit actually, that we're working with, and I'll show you some older examples as we go further. This is a durian, a, a wild durian, one that we just planted last year. It's uh, probably a Durio graviolens. Durians are famous for their incredibly, some say rich uh, aroma, others find it not as pleasant, especially people from the West. It's one of the most coveted fruits, often called the king of fruits in Southeast Asia. And Alfred uh, Russell Wallace, who was a great 19th century uh, botanist and explorer and uh, entomologist, said that it was worth a trip to the Far East to taste this fruit. It's so unique and he spent many paragraphs trying to describe the experience of all the different uh, flavors of this fruit that don't seem to quite match up, like flavors of burnt onion and flavors of pudding and cheeses and all kinds of other flavors and but it's it's a super super tropical it doesn't uh, won't fruit outdoors here in south florida 
So we are working to uh, try to get it to fruit in here. So this is one of the important durian species that we recently planted and it's been growing, growing quite well. And we have a couple of older ones, uh, durians, that are here in the middle of the Whitman Pavilion. Uh, this is another wild uh, durian, Durio testudinarium, that um, has been growing in here for a while. Um, we haven't gotten it to fruit yet, but we have several other durians in here. This one here and one in the center here, they have a nice columnar form. They grow right up to the ceiling of the Whitman Pavilion. And over the last couple of years, we've really been, we've doing, been doing a lot of pruning in here, trying to get a lot more light and air circulation in and uh, adding the fog, we're trying to make it even more tropical, so hopefully these will start to flower and we'll be able to produce, we hope, the first uh, durian in South Florida. That's the big goal. And that will be, would be quite, quite, a, quite a moment. Uh, durians require bats to pollinate them in nature, but you can also pollinate them by hand. And uh, we've had the experience of pollinating them in Thailand actually. I actually got a chance to be there when they were pollinating by hand, so we know how it's done, and we're hoping to get a chance here very soon. In addition to the, to the tall trees, which are the main uh, feature of the, of the Whitman here, uh, we also have some other smaller fruits that we're trying that we recently planted that are very exotic and special. This is a palm, uh, the salak, which is also uh, a plant that's difficult to grow in fruit here. It's a fruit that's kind of also hard to describe. The fruits have what almost are like fish or lizard scales on them, and they taste something like between an apple and a pineapple, kind of crunchy, but with a pineapple type of flavor. They get quite large, and they have these really aggressive spines. So this one has the spines, but this is a special selection that's much smaller. So it should be able to fruit at a much smaller size and you need both males and females so we planted three of them here in hopes that we will get both and then people will be able to sample uh, salak fruit here who hadn't had that chance. Another of the really emblematic tropical fruits that are difficult to fruit here that we're uh, pursuing. According to Bill Whitman and David Fairchild, both of their legacy of trying to do what was difficult and impossible. One of the big things that David Fairchild uh, pursued all his life was the improvement of mangoes in South Florida. And he was the first one to introduce really good quality uh, mangoes from India back in the late 19th century, the Mogoba mango. And then when that hybridized with the mangoes that were already in Florida, we got the first Hayden mango, which mango selections are now up to uh, hundreds of cultivars around the world, many of which we can grow here. But one of the new frontiers for mangoes has been uh, introducing the wild relatives of, of mangoes, often from Borneo. And we have three of them here. We have this one here, we have this one, we have this one here. So these are three different wild species of mango, which all have very unique flavors that are quite different than the standard mangoes that we get to enjoy here in South Florida. And some of them also have better disease resistance and different textures. There's been work over the last uh, several years among the people who are experts in mangoes in South Florida to hybridize this, these with our standard mangoes and and get all kinds of exciting new characteristics. So this is the kind of pioneering fruit work that Bill Whitman and David Fairchild were dedicating their lives to and that is still going very, very strong. And so because many of these, we don't know how hardy they are in our outdoor conditions, we made sure to, to plant one of each here inside the Whitman to make sure that they will survive long-term and give us plants we can propagate and share with other fruit experts. We just shared uh, cuttings of this with a the main fruit expert at Naples Botanic Garden to make sure that we have all of these backed up. So we're all collaborating and working together just as Bill Whitman and David Fairchild had this network of, of fruit people that they were always exchanging things with and it's still going on strong just in that same tradition. Having the Whitman become a whole experience of tropical plants with the foundations being the fruit trees and because many of them produce big leaves and produce a lot of shade, uh, we're limited in how many of those huge fruit trees we can have. And uh, ones like the durian are just perfect because they don't produce too much shade to shade other things. Um, but another uh, group of tropical plants we're adding as companion and complementary plants are tropical conifers because they don't produce much shade and they kind of give add to the cloud forest field now that we have the fog system in here. And they're some of the most endangered uh, tropical plants, so we have a few of them in here to add a little bit of complementary interest in addition to the tropical fruits. And we also have a lot of other um, 
So you see understory plants here that are growing and covering the ground that also add to this tropical forest feel because many of these uh, tropical fruits, especially the wild mangoes, the wild durians, come from really rich, uh, diverse tropical forests in nature. And so you're getting that whole dimension of tropical fruits that people often don't experience. You're getting kind of the rainforest feel instead of the orchard feel. So that's kind of a unique aspect we're trying to build inside the Whitman Pavilion here. One of the most spectacular tropical fruits that people often don't get to see growing well in South Florida is uh, chocolate. And uh, this is a chocolate tree here. Chocolate tends to be on and off outdoors depending on whether we get nice mild winters. We've had a lot of mild winters recently so we can grow and fruit it outdoors pretty well but then once we start getting cold snaps again they start to suffer because it's a, another ultra tropical tree um, which is uh, what the, the Whitman Pavilion was uh, designed to, uh, to house and, and grow and so this is one that has been really good at producing lots of flowers and fruits. So it makes these tiny flowers. And then we also have lots of fruits uh, all over the trunk here. And the fruits are what produce the seeds and the seeds are what are used to make chocolate. So they take out the seeds. Actually, they don't use the fruits to make chocolate. They use the seeds and then prepare them very carefully, ferment them, and then uh, that's how chocolate is made. So that's an important dimension of tropical fruits and tropical foods that we're representing in here in the Whitman. And it also has this wonderfully lush tropical foliage that adds to this rainforest atmosphere. We recently put in these chains uh, across the uh, ceiling here that are actually have uh, different epiphytes. So we're trying to have all different layers that you find in the tropical forest experience. We're having these that throughout this area that usually isn't occupied in the kind of the middle, the higher uh, reaches of the pavilion. That way we can have orchids, we have bromeliads and whatnot. So it's keeping a whole, whole multi-dimensional, multi-story experience. And the facility was originally designed mainly to accommodate tall fruits, but in at it does that very well and now it accommodates all these other layers that we find in tropical forests. Similarly, we have a neat feature here that we call a wet wall. It's actually a limestone wall that we've been filling with rare tropical plants that also add to this rainforest feel that, that emphasizes the rainforest origins of many of our ultra tropical fruits. It adds to that experience with the constant drip of moisture and then all the diverse plants that are clinging to the rocks showing all their diversity of foliage and color, texture, and different flowers. So now that we have all the, all the infrastructure here, uh, we're going to try some of the other uh, holy grail fruits. We're going to try the rambutan, which is uh, a fruit that's uh, been proven a big challenge in South Florida. And uh, we're also going to keep exploring more ways to get more diversity of, of durians and the wild relatives, of also different relatives of mangosteens and mangoes and uh, other fruits that the tropical fruit community will be sharing with us to continue this tradition of exploration and experimentation and trying to find the ways to do things that were thought impossible before because there are, are plant pioneers that really um, inspired and founded all these institutions, this garden and this beautiful greenhouse we're in. You know, they didn't know what was impossible. They just kept trying until they found a way to make it possible. And so we're continuing in that tradition here.